like, people really, like again, for the youngsters, this may sound crazy, people really thought the internet was a fad. Like actually, right? And I thought everybody would have a website and every company, and they did. Social media really was weird. Like people really didn't want it to happen. They thought it was awkward. They thought it was stupid. They thought it was for just kids. It's, most people have a social network, right, that they're involved in. There's not a business on earth that's not gonna have NFT infrastructure. It doesn't make any sense. It's technology. Right now everyone's too fascinated on the art and the collectibles part. That's a tiny thing. Everyone's focused on the art and collectibles with a hint of utility like I just did with Vcon. The NFT is a ticket. It's gonna flip. It's utilities with a hint of collectability. Everyone of Delta, you know, your ticket, that might be worth $3 because it has some artists on it, but there's a million of them, right? So, of course they're gonna integrate it. There's no alternative. TikTok yes. just made a major move and they talked about a 50-50 split, which would be the first platform that's come in for YouTube's super generous ad rev share that has been a major, Mo- I think, reason why creators flock there, it pays the best. Uh, right now it's limited to big creators, 100,000, and uh, what do you think in terms of your predictions and TikTok gunning for everybody right now? Look, I think they've done a really good job. I think. First of all, their algorithm is based on the interest graph instead of the social graph, which is a huge advantage. And I believe in merit. So my favorite thing is to look at all your TikToks where this video got 17 views, this one got 430, and this one got 1.9 million. That feels like merit. Everybody's Instagram being around the same numbers doesn't feel like merit. And so I think we're intoxicated by the merit of it. They've been very aggressive. They've, they've already won. And now they're just going to expand. That's what everybody does, right? So they won on this thing, now they're saying, oh, you can make longer videos. Oh, you can write more, like today, I was like, wait a minute, I can write more copy? I missed the headlines, I've been in like a cocoon for four months with Vcon and Series 2 friends. So they'll just create everything, and so, yeah, I mean, I think they're incredibly aggressive. They, they tend to, they're still acting like a small company. They're innovating, 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 and now they've got everybody following them. They're the clear leader, in my opinion, of the attention graph, which I think is the most important currency in the world, and I think um, it's a smart move. If you, backstage, you said something, you said that short form is a gateway to long form, so what would your strategy be for that? If you're making TikToks, you're getting the short form reach, is long form substance in your opinion, and does that mean send people off platform? Does that mean try to get TikTok to get your account to 10 minutes, which is super interesting, longer form uh, vertical video? What do you mean by short form as a gateway to long form and what would the tactics be in that? It means that a lot of long form creators don't focus on short form and vice versa. There's a reason I have one hour keynote videos and one hour podcasts, but also pound unlimited micro content that's 10 seconds long. Um, You can go very tactical and you know, you know, a lot of people want to hear that are like, should I make a TikTok that says, watch the rest on YouTube? It's less about that. People will find you. They become intrigued. Your URL strategy on all your social networks should be very thoughtful. I'm constantly changing them based on whatever my objectives are. Uh, but it just means that the world of content creating should be always thought about as and. And I notice that everybody's into or. Right, people are insecure. Most of you did not start on TikTok fast enough because you didn't have followers on it. You didn't start on TikTok fast enough because you had 80,000 followers on Instagram and you had zero on TikTok and you didn't like that feeling. That's why celebrities lost the first time around. So like the things that you made fun of people for on Instagram, you became on TikTok. And so, you know, I just, I think it's always and. Everyone's like, or, they're like, Gary, I'm already on Instagram. I, they love using like logical excuses like, Gary, I need to focus. I'm like, cool. Knock yourself out, I'll talk to you in 36 months when you're crying. (laughs) You're focusing on losing. (laughs) The lack of humility and the lack of interest in putting in the work on a new thing because you just figured out the last thing is why most people don't grow. There's not an accident that I've been winning on every platform for the last 15 years. It's called humility and hard work. You think I was pumped? When I had a million followers on Twitter and Instagram came along, I was pissed. I'm like, I'm fucking winning this bird game. But I'm like, fuck, everyone's gonna go there, so I need to go. You think I was pumped when TikTok came along? I was dominating the gram. 
I was like, that's where it's gonna be. So the lack of humility and the lack of like, shit, I don't wanna learn this new thing, I just got this, that's fine. There's a problem though. What you want has nothing to do with what the market is doing. The market doesn't give a shit about your feelings. The market's not like, oh, Tyrone spent a lot of time on fucking Instagram, we should not create TikTok. You think God's thinking like that? Get the fuck out of here. You won on YouTube or you won on Instagram doing that to the person that was holding on to Twitter or Facebook, but then you're mad when TikTok's doing it to you. The hypocrisy is deafening. Powerful. That's it. Come on, man. Gary, that's a great lead in to. Uh, By the way, I'm laughing so. Did you see this? Yeah. No video. Hard yeah. drive crashed. Yeah, got it. That I know. makes me laugh. Brutal. I know. It's see, nice you have to adjust to reality. We're adjusting. We you, wanted, right you wanted some sort of video. That's right. But the fucking hard drive crashed. You gotta pivot. Gotta pivot. Yeah, life is life. I'm pumped that you got a blue check on Instagram, but here comes TikTok to fuck your shit up. What are you gonna do? <laughs> You're gonna sit and hope? I'm watching everybody like hope. I hope this TikTok thing doesn't happen. All of you got forced in. Technology will beat your ass. I love all of you that don't think NFTs are coming. You will lose. You're pumped that the market's down, see? See nothing. I'll see you in 2027. Let's go, baby! Yeah, bud. Hey, I love this lead in TikTok. There's a lot of people in the room (laughs) that are, that are, uh, they're at, they're at a place where there are a lot of people doing really well. I mean, some people started out and you always say, if you got, you don't got money, but you got time, that's what you got to do. You got to put the sweat equity in. But there's people in the room, they have money. And I, I'd like to hear about Team Gary Vee. Like, and a lot of people think, okay, to do this, because you say, I went on TikTok, but part of the way you're doing that is because people are multiplying your content, your casting vision. Can you speak into maybe, we, the team Gary Vee is pretty advanced now. Yes. Can we start a little bit at the beginning as you think about those that would say, what, am I, what about my first hires? How do I even do this? Hire? Great at real estate or financial services, but okay, how do I start, you know, every, where do I get my D-Rock? Where do I get the whole thing? Speak to early stages of building that team to help you grow with video. You need to hire people that do things that you don't want to do. Yes. Where do you find them? The internet. People say things that drive me crazy because they don't want to do it. As if you can't find it. Are you telling me you're at this conference and you can't find people? You don't know what Fiverr is, you don't know how to post on LinkedIn, you don't know how to search terms on Twitter, like, People come up with excuses. A lot, of people, a lot of people don't grow because they want money to buy things. A lot of people's businesses don't grow because they want the business to give them money so they can get a Corvette or a second. This is back to you've got to find the thing you like. Because if you're building a brand or your thing to buy the yacht, you're not gonna build a very big thing. I'm just building the thing to build the thing. It's more interesting for me to build the thing than it is, it's like this. Some people love, actually here's a great comp. This, is, this blew my mind. One of the most stunning things that happened to me in my life. My whole life, I've wanted to be a professional athlete, right? So by fifth grade I was like, fuck, I don't think I can play for the Jets. <laughs> These kids have gotten much bigger and stronger. In fact, I had such good hand-eye coordination that I was fucking killing people in first and second and third grade. But somewhere around like fifth grade, I'm like, why is everyone twice my size now? And so I was like, this might not be in the cards, and that's when I decided to buy the Jets. But I was like, fuck it. If I can't play for it, I'll just own the whole fucking thing. So now me and AJ get into the sports business, and we have a big practice now, and when I realized that a lot of kids play professional sports, but they don't love the game, it was just their best way to monetize, that like blew my mind. And I mean, really don't like it. And like, even when we recruit kids now, I never wanna recruit a kid that doesn't love the game. Cause I don't think they're gonna be at the, you know, cause we make our money on the second and third contract. There's kids that sign that first contract and it's a wrap. You wanna know why people are out of the league in three, four years? Cause they didn't give a fuck about the game. So for me, this thing that we're talking about, 
I don't want the things that come from being the best entrepreneur in the world. I just want to be the best entrepreneur in the world. So it goes to like, do you love it? Because if you don't, you can't get there. And so a lot of people don't have a DRock or a team because they don't want to spend the 53,000 on it because they want a burka bag and they want to go to Tahiti and they want a fucking Lambo. You're taking the money out of your business for your insecurities instead of feeding the business to win the fucking game. People want to look successful more than actually be successful. Back to why I make so much content about self-esteem. The reason I focus on love and being kind to yourself and the shit that I've been talking about is that's the seed of the whole game. If you need Lambos and chains and accolades and check marks and a million followers to clog the holes that you have in your soul, then you're gonna not be able to build meaningful things because you're taken out of your business instead of feeding it. Gary, for stage two, and this is kind of a personal question because I'm a case study for it. You know, your influence has so, I went from making tech review videos, from reviewing tech, doing tech tutorials and affiliate marketing, built a six figure income. One of the biggest pieces of advice as I'm watching your content and I'm absorbing is we put it back in. We put it back in. My wife and I just looked at the numbers in 2019. Our income went down, our, our net was like nothing because we just went, and we went all in team. 20, and then in 2020, things forexed after making a massive investment back in our business. We're now 23 people, um, and we're trying to really follow your model. 63 pieces of content a day, that free <laughs> deck that you have, or whatever. All, all of the numbers I throw out are completely arbitrary. The number, <laughs> and I mean it, I mean it. The, you're talking about the 86 pieces of content, you know, 86. Gary, yeah. 73? Four TikToks a day, all of it, all of it's arbitrary. The number is as much as humanly fucking possible. <laughs> They're more at bats for attention and opportunity. You know what's better than 100 push-ups? 200. <laughs> you like that one, huh? <laughs> but I love, you know who I love the most? Fitness people. Fitness entrepreneurs are my favorite. Let me tell you why. They're so good at their craft, like, right? Like, but then with the business, they don't do the thing they do in fitness. They like, and fitness entrepreneurs shit on people because people want shortcuts in fitness. They want fucking implants, they want fucking apple cider vinegar pills, they want all sorts of bullshit when the answer is put the work in the gym and eat properly. Like, follow the model. But then as entrepreneurs, you see these fucking all beefed up, did everything fucking perfect. I'm talking about the ones that don't cheat. I'm talking about doing it right. And then they come to business and they're like, what's the shortcut? And I'm like, you know that there's no shortcut in this shit. The fuck are you looking for shortcut in this shit? Right? It, they fascinate me because they have such a big chapter of their life they know. Everyone's like, I'm, I spent 38 years looking for the shortcut. I'm like, what, what? They're like, it's fucking go in the gym and fucking eat properly, motherfucker. Amen. So, ba so back to content, I'm like, I don't know. Like, some of you make really good TikToks, but you don't do this, like, you have to be contextual to the platform. You have to know who the audience is and slang matters, right? You have to understand, you have to put in the reps, the content output, like, you know, everybody tries to use social as distribution. They make one piece of content and post it everywhere. That completely doesn't work. You've gotta contextualize and post creative for the platform. I've, I've given three talks today. Flew in, that's why I was able to make it work with Beacon. I'm super pumped about surrounding this and I surrounded it. All three are different. I have to read the room. The, con you know, the, the philosophical shit's the same, but it's got to be different. Right? It's like quiz. It's all food, but it's different. And you have to know your audience. I don't understand how people come with fucking YouTube DNA into TikTok and think it's gonna work. The mindset's different. The same person, the same human, I'm not talking about age and gender and race and religion, the same human being is a different consumer on TikTok than they are on Instagram. Your mindset's different. One's passive entertainment. On LinkedIn it might be information. Like, it's all context. 
So level two, Gary Vee. Uh, team Gary Vee. Yes. And, and so uh, maybe break down, I'm, I'm looking to take advantage of a little bit of advice, how you built the team, how fast you're trying to scale the team. Do you, you have people running, operating things, editors, uh, I mean, in, Every, in, at this point, everything, you know, I, and maybe some people that are really paying attention. My content's a little bit down because BeFriends and VaynerX is exploding and I'm like, uh, there's a lot for me to do there. But yeah, I mean, you know, I film everything. Yeah. I film absolutely everything and then we go into post-production and we strip the audio for the podcast and we, and we have writers who take the words, like everything is me. Even, you know, everything has to be me. How many people will take you? By the way, that's a real big point. Anybody here, who has a social media person post on their behalf and write the copy, to this day, every single word, every single word on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, every single word in the copy is written actually by me. I know people who like immediately hire someone to post on their behalf and write the copy as if it's them. That's that apple cinnamon fucking gummies. <laughs> So obviously I don't make the videos, but like half the videos in my WhatsApp with my team right now never get posted because I don't like it. Mm. I don't like it. I think they missed the context. I think it's out of context. I don't want to talk about that right now because the world is this, that. And then I post it, me. So, you know, I think that people don't want to do the work. But you can have tons of people around you. We, we, figured out document, don't create. That was the big unlock. Just fucking film everything, post produce. This is a good reason to start shows. If you look, go, you know, this might really help a lot of you. Go to YouTube tonight, when you get back home, put in my name and sort by lowest views. You will be blown away how many little things I do and have done, no audience. Because I wanted just the content from doing the podcast for my post production. So like, at this point in my career, it's awesome because I get to win twice. Back in the day, I would do it because I wanted the content. Now, it's like a double win because I know me being on a guest on an up and coming show really helps them. So I'm giving love and roses and I'm getting my content. But a lot of you say no to shit because your humility's not in check. I still say yes to shit that a lot of you pass on because I out humble you. <laughs> Gary, I have one People more are fucking question. walking around here at, like, oh, I'm only gonna do Joe Rogan. You fucking suck right now. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? You should do everything. <laughs> one is greater than zero. One is greater than zero. I watch people walk around thinking there's somebody. Yo, I got, there was somebody at VCon trying to get into some particular, they're like, yo, I got 18,000 followers on Instagram. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> people get high on their own supply real quick. Real quick. People walking around here thinking there's somebody because they got 230,000 followers on TikTok. So? <laughs> Humble the fuck up. Shit will get better. Gary, one of the big things that holds people back is self-consciousness, but specifically people that worry about how am I gonna look on camera? How am I gonna sound on camera? Uh, what would you say to somebody who's just trembling with fear to get on camera because of those insecurities? I say a lot of things, it's the core foundation of my content. The last seven years of my life have been dedicated on trying to build people's self-esteem. I sound crazy. Not all that, I mean, I've gotten a little bit better looking, but like, you know, like, I'm not winning on that. Like, so? Like, I don't, like, high school ended. Everybody has zits too. Like, you know, like people are like, like I laugh when I was like, yo, you really suck at this. I'm like, you suck at shit too. As if not everybody sucks at shit. Everybody in here sucks shit at so much shit, it's crazy. <laughs> right? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> and but, but you want the, re I'll give you a real answer to what I actually think works. This is a wild answer to this, in my opinion, but I've really started to zero in. I'm gonna help you jump over the hurdle of the fear of how I look, how I sound, 
deploy compassion to those who shit on you. I think the reason I'm winning is when somebody says you're an idiot, you're a scam, you're full of shit, you suck, you're ugly, fuck you. My, my brain immediately goes to like, man, for somebody to take time out of their day to come to my profile, to try to tear me down because they're hurting so much inside, I only have love for them. I'm aware that we're in a societal place right now where the way we respond to people's hate is with hate back to them, but I just don't have that gear. When I get shit on, I deploy love through the form of compassion. If you're able to do that, you won't hear them. But that's why I've been pounding on humility. The reason I work is because I've got this going on. For when I get a thousand comments, 860 of them are a goat emoji. The other 140 are, you're a scam artist. When you can't hear either, you can move. When you only hear the goat stuff, you become vulnerable to the scam stuff. Too many people want that affirmation and that's why people become unhappy. If your values are based on people giving you accolades, then you become susceptible to the teardown. I'm just attached to both. Can't hear you, I'm on the field. The fuck am I gonna worry about you cheering or booing? I'm on the fucking field, you're eating popcorn. <laughs> you're fucking making videos. You're putting in work. You're trying to win for yourself. You're worried about Sally Pants 97 in Arkansas who's pissed? <laughs> fuck her. <laughs> <laughs>